Dr. Oz here. Michael Rubin and DJ Khaled challenged me. And no one backs down from a Rubin Khaled all-in challenge. So I accept I am all in. I'm so moved by what you guys are doing. It's hard to be healthy when you're hungry. So let's fix this today by raising money to feed those in need. Now, I'm going to have, here, ready for this? A lucky winner co-host my show with me. Together, we can make a difference. The All In Challenge raised nearly $60 million for organizations that help feed those in need. One of the people who answered the call, a pioneer in the fields of health and longevity, and someone who has witnessed firsthand how food insecurity can take a toll on someone's lifespan and their well-being. Please welcome All In Challenge winner, Dwayne Clark, who has brought us secrets to longevity. Now, spoiler alert, they're not what you think. Thank you for taking the challenge and being here today, Dwayne. Now, you founded an elder care community called Aegis Living, which cares for more than 60,000 individuals. And have you made it your business to figure out the secrets to longevity? I met you years ago at the Bastyr University facility. It's you know, an iconic institution, really done a lot of you know, work researching longevity. Why has this issue been so important to you? Well, it happened to me at a very young age. My, my grandmother, when I was about 13, who lived with us, fell and broke her hip. She went, uh, she went into a nursing home and, uh, you know, this was a really educated, smart woman, owned a business, you know, spoke multiple languages. And when she went into that nursing home, she all of a sudden, she changed and the way she treated her changed. And that, that left an indelible impression in, in my mind about what, what is this all about? Why are people, once they cross the threshold of long-term care, why are they treated differently? And then I got into this field of uh, senior housing and when I was a young administrator in my 20s, there was a farmer named Carl and a doctor named Dr. Smith. Now, Carl was a character. He was about 5'8", about 300 pounds. He'd been a farmer all his life, worked with his hands, been outdoors all, all his life, and had a wicked sense of humor. When he was coming down the hallway for breakfast, he's like, I'm going to have me some pig and eggs for breakfast, poking everybody, looking at everyone, making jokes along, this, along the way, and his wife just adored him. Now contrast that with Dr. Smith, who'd been in an office and worked for 40 some years as a GP in his office. His wife was kind of a henpecker. You know, he was very quiet, not a big friend community. And I always thought, well, Carl's probably, I'm gonna come in one day and Carl's probably gonna be passed away and Dr. Smith will live forever. And the exact opposite happened. What happened is the doctor passed away while I was a young administrator there and Carl lived another decade. And that started curiosity for me. And I'm like, hmm, this is more than genetics. This is more than just body type. There's something else to this. Yeah, no, I've, I've had that same experience as you probably know. And it, uh, it's life altering. Now, you also had a personal medical scare laying in the hospital. That was a wake up call as well in your personal life, independent of your mom. Yeah, I actually started writing this book 30 summers more about seven or eight years ago. And the, it started out being a book that was essentially going to be about the stories of the elderly people I'd worked for, over 60,000 60, residents that I'd worked with. And um, about four or five months into the research, I had this company retreat, a lot of younger executives there. I was eating rich foods, getting up in the morning because I'd always been an athlete. And I'm like, well, I, these guys are not going to outwork me. I'm going to outlift them. I'm going to outrun them. I'm going to you know, extend my workouts. And I'd get up the next morning and I, my body was like, oh God, I'm dying here. So, you know, I popped the Advil, you know, and then at night I drink the wine and lots of rich acidic foods. And I ended up with a, you know, with a GI bleed. You know, while you're laying in a hospital hooked up to these machines, you start to contemplate life, right? And I thought, well, this book is just not about the stories of the people that uh, I've taken care of. This, this is, should be a book about a wake up call for people in their 40s and 50s and what they can do to change their life, to live longer and live better. And that, that started a five-year pursuit where I in, inflicted myself really as a guinea pig in studies and did crazy things that my personal doctor didn't always approve of. But uh, I think I gained a lot of knowledge and research out of that. Well, when it's personal, I tell you, pay attention. So Dwayne has interviewed people in his assistant living communities about what keeps them young. And, and you know, he's got some surprising answers from the people he spoke to. Now, what do you want? I'm going to do a little sleep to start us out here. <laughs> See you take a look. I will be 104 on the 15th of July, as far as I know. Hiking, I love dogs. Baseball, because that's all I knew. Being Italian, I, I love Italian food. I love to be out on the ocean. 
bicycles, yes. <laughs> How did you find out about bicycles? I sing, I do a lot of walking here. You know, I like to have fun. I'm a good tennis player, <laughs> too. I live in with my family. I'm happy with my family together. Today, Dwayne is gonna share secrets to longevity. And the first is to sit less. We've talked about this. Some people argue that sitting is a, is a new smoking, but we are used to hearing exercise more, but you add to that specifically sitting less. I agree, by the way, but why do you think so? Well, Dr. Isaac, one of the, one of the comments I hear frequently is people say, you know, I'm gonna live a lot longer than my dad because I go to the gym two or three days a week. And I go, but talk to me about your dad. Did he wash his car? Did he walk his dog? Did your mom hang the, their laundry out on the line? Did, did you have a landline that you had to get up and, and answer the phone? Did you ever go to the encyclopedia? All these things that we used to do were movement, right? And this little device, this little iPhone now has changed our world for convenience sake. So that, that, is, that is one of the problems that this generation is now facing. We are not moving enough. In fact, you know, the, the whole 10,000 steps thing is, is a big deal. You know, the American Heart Association, Association recommends 10,000. What we do know is that under 5,000, your body will actually start to atrophy. So it's just moving your body. Our bodies were meant to move. And if we don't do that, you know, our longevity is not going to be great. Dwayne says the next secret to longevity is to do balanced strength training. And again, very specifically, being balanced actually takes a little bit of effort. Why is this critical? Well, you know, I get asked a lot, you know, what are two or three things I can do to increase my longevity? And I say, well, stand on one foot while, you, while you're brushing your teeth. Or if you're watching television, you know, when the commercial comes on for 30 seconds, just stand on one foot. And they go, well, why would I do that? How does that affect my longevity? And I said, well, here's what happens to elderly. They come in, they have vibrant lifestyles, and all of a sudden, because they have poor balance, they trip and fall. Well, when they trip and fall, they usually break something, usually a hip. Well, then they go to the hospital and guess what? They, they are on their back for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And guess what happens? They get pneumonia. So the root cause is not balanced. The end result of their death on their death certificate is pneumonia. But the reason that they fell is because they had poor balance. So don't fall, you know, do some balanced exercise. You know, that's where brushing your teeth for 30 seconds on one foot, whether it's during the commercial, you know, or just talking on a Zoom call you know, go on one foot and perfect your balance and that will help you prevent falls in the future. Coming up, the morning regimen that changed Dwayne's life and has him feeling younger than he did 20 years ago. We are back giving you secrets to longevity from a man who has made it his mission to uncover the things that keep us living and feeling younger for longer. Dwayne Clark has a lot of great ideas in his book, 30 Summers More, adding time back to your aging clock. Dwayne Clark's gonna talk to us about his specific tips now and they're not always what you think. All right, next secret to longevity is don't sweat the small stuff. How, how can this help you feel younger and live longer? Well, stress, you, you have to think about how we die, really. And, and, and people, it's just not the fact that, you know, our body dies, it's our cell dies. And one of the things that happen is, you know, if you look at cellular growth and, and everything, by the time we hit 30, we, you know, before 30, we produce more cells than we can use. Once we reach the age of 30, we actually start to consume more cells than, than we can possibly you know, uh, produce. And so one of the things that we have to do is think about what are the things that kills our cells? But one of the things is stress. You know, that's why I meditate. That's why you know, we have good workout regimes. But more than anything else, let the small stuff go, right? If you're stuck in traffic, don't get all upset about it. If, you're, you know, if your daughter is 10 minutes late home from her date, don't stress out about it. You know, stop overscheduling yourself. These things are self-inflicted that are hurting yourself, that are killing your cells and will shorten your longevity. So I've got a little example. This is one of the first demonstrations I ever did on the Oprah show years ago. So your genes that what we're talking about today are powerful predictors of health, longevity and disease, but that's only part of the story. So this shoelace is gonna tell you the other part. So let me get a little space here. So you see the shoelace, right? And the top of the shoelace, this is a good Scrabble word. These are called aglets, the little tips here, the plastic parts that you put through little holes, right? So this is your DNA. Let's just pretend this little strand of shoelace is your DNA. Now these tips are important because you can't get them through your, your shoe, uh, to, 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 to get your shoes together if you don't have a little plastic tip there. But let's say because of stress, you cut off this tip. 
So watch this, you see? That's the, the, the scissors are your stress in your life. Boom, cut it. Now watch what happens. When you cut that plastic off, are you able to lace your shoelaces? Not so easily because they begin to fray. And this frayed tip, that you can see right there, unlike the nicely honed down aglet, which is representative of a young person, this frayed shoelace is what happens when you get older. And the more stress you have, the faster they fray. And that prevents your chromosomes from doing what they need to do. They begin to break down and your body and your brain begin to age prematurely. Now, Dwayne, you've actually had your telomeres, these shoelaces, so to speak, measured. What did you find out? Well, it was interesting. I, I had my telomeres uh, measured before I made these lifestyle changes right about the time I started writing the book. And I was actually in the lower quartile, uh, which was not good. And then I did a variety of things that are in my book. I did meditation. I, I focused on sleep, started drinking lots and lots of water. And about three years later, got my, my telomeres measured and I was in the upper quartile. So you can change this. So incredibly important that you pay attention to these things if you're into your illness and longevity. And when you do pay attention and start to develop a routine, you can actually do it every single day, which is the key to keeping those telomeres youthful. So you created a morning regimen for yourself. And the morning regime is critical because you'll do it every morning. Like many successful folks and CEOs, you're very specific in what you do when you wake up. So walk us through yours. Yeah, I don't know if it's the CEO in me or whatever, but I have a very regimented morning. So, you know, the first thing I do is hydrate before my feet even hit the ground, before I go to the bathroom, anything else. The next thing I do, because I want to start my day off positive, is I have to, I try to have some day, some kind of gratitude. And whether that's, you know, getting up and, you know, uh, looking out and say, geez, thank you, universe, for the sunny day or something I'm excited about or, geez, I had a great night's sleep, start to be in, in gratitude. I, I then meditate. So as I said, I'm a big meditator. I try to meditate for 22 minutes a day. I have a very specific shake routine that I was telling you about that has about 20 vitamins in it, as well as you know spinach and kale and blueberries. And then I try to work out five days a week. All those things combined, people are like, well, I don't have time for that. You know, sans the workout, uh, it probably takes 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah, I mean, that's what they say, right? I'm, I'm in a rush in the morning. I don't have time for that stuff, but you figured it out. So how has your life changed since you adopted this routine? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a game changer. As I said, my telomeres totally changed. So that's you know, scientific evidence that it changed. I've got more energy. I'm more creative. I'm a 63-year-old CEO. So I need that energy, better mental health space. Um, and you know, I, 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 my mood overall is better. I mean, it's, just, it's, total, it's a total game changer for life. 